Hi. Today I'm going to give a brief introduction about Web3. It is seen as the third generation of the internet. VCs have been pouring billions of dollars into this huge vision, especially in 2021. According to some people, it's nothing more than a marketing trick, but let's get to finding out more about the technology behind it and what the term actually means instead of focusing on the name. Ideas of Web3 were actually first proposed in 1999 by none other than the creator of World Wide Web. Tim Berners-Lee. To really understand what Web3 means, which is supposed to be the future of the internet, we first need to understand about Web1 and 2, which are terms used for how the World Wide Web has been till now. Now, Web1 was the first version of the internet, somewhat between 1990s to 2004-2005-ish. Here, the web pages were mostly static and read-only. The users were consumers who only consumed the information from the web pages. And this is the reason why it was called the read-only web. It was great for reading information and publishing content, but not so great for interacting with people. One of the biggest examples in this can be Wikipedia. Let's start with the basics first. There are three important services you can access on the internet. Surfing the World Wide Web. Surfing? That sounds pretty cool already. Andrew, don't interrupt. Go on, Peter. Then there are news groups to share information with people. And then there's email. Email? I heard that's really neat. My cousin has a pen pal in Sweden and they write back and forth and it transmits right away and does. Then came in Web 2.0. This was from 2005, 2004-ish uh, to right now because this is the internet or this is the World Wide Web as we know now. Web 2 is the modern, centralized, read-write-only version of the internet. Here, the web pages became dynamic and interactive. It also allowed users to become shoppers, content creators, etc. because it opened doors for two-way communication, while in Web 1, it was only one way. Now, later on in Web2, we saw the emergence of certain platforms like Google, Amazon, Facebook, etc. In this, not only did we get information from the web pages, the web pages started collecting information from us. Now, think about it. Two different people, me and you. We both will have different Facebook feeds, different, uh, different Twitter feeds, and different Instagram Explore page. Why is that? It's just because our feeds are altered according to our likes, dislikes, preferences, etc. And that is the information which we provide the companies. Because these companies or tech giants had easy access to our information and could easily manage it, which by the way was initially done to enhance the user experience, started tracking and misusing users' data and then selling it to third party or advertisers for tailored advertisements and marketing campaigns. This is when Facebook was charged with a fine of $5 billion in 2019 for breaching data and privacy laws. We didn't take a broad enough view of our responsibility and that was a big mistake. And it was my mistake, and I'm sorry. Now, if you actually give it a thought, in Web2, the core of their business model is monopoly of data. Because the entire Web2 is basically owned by a couple of tech giants, including Amazon, Google, YouTube, Facebook, etc. And they're practically the one who own the entire internet at this time. Web2 has definitely provided the world with a lot of advancements, a lot of technologies and services, but the users are now completely fed up because of this hugely centralized internet owned by just a few tech companies who have become massive gatekeepers. This is where Web3 comes in. The term Web3 was coined by Polkadot's founder and Ethereum's co-founder, Gavin Wood, back in 2014. It refers to the read, write, own version of the internet. It represents kind of a new philosophy about how to realize these technologies in a more distributed and democratic way. It's a decentralized, secure internet where the users will be able to share information and money on the web without any middlemen or third party. So there's no need to rely on banks for money and on tech giants and companies for information. Users can get entire control over their data with more privacy, more autonomy, because this will all be operated on a decentralized ledger technology or the blockchain technology. We won't get into the complications of the term right now. The apps created in Web3 are called dApps or decentralized applications. It's where users can attain ownership and participate in the governance of the network too. What makes Web3 different is the ability to own the actual network. And that's what crypto assets themselves represent, is an ownership stake in an underlying network. So when you hear- Now the most intriguing question which comes in is that how can an organization or a company be operational if there's no single party or centralized entity governing over its operations? Normally, when it comes to the existing tech corporations like Google, Amazon, anything, which actually has billions and billions of users, the decisions 
about the company or the platform are actually taken by a small group of people in the board. The users have almost no say in the decision making amendments or anything about the platform. In Web3, every company is run by a DAO, Decentralized Autonomous Organization. This refers to no CEOs, no owners, no single entity governing over the network or the platform. Here, theoretically, users or people will own virtual tokens or crypto tokens, which would make them participants in the operations of the Web3 company. Everybody with a certain amount of tokens, which can also be called governance tokens, get to have a say in company's decisions. These decisions or amendments can easily be done through a process of voting, for example. In Web3, all of your data is actually in your own control. And you can even choose uh, the data or information which you'd like to share with the platform. There are some platforms which will actually offer to pay you in crypto for your data. For example, um, BAT or for example, Brave Browser, which uses the token BAT, which is basic attention token. There are decentralized or web three versions of some of your favorite applications from video and music streaming platforms like YouTube and Spotify to even gaming platforms like Fortnite. There is a web three alternative for all of these platforms. Now, Web3 also has a lot of disadvantages. People like Elon Musk, Jack Dorsey don't really believe in the concept or the term Web3 and think it's some sort of a marketing trick or a sugar-coated term. And then there are also some issues with the UI UX as compared to Web2 application. If you want, I can also discuss the disadvantages of Web3 in detail in the next video. Now, I don't know when Web3 is going to become this huge reality where most of the world is going to be a part of it, but that definitely requires massive adoption and advancements. Now, personally, I'm really bullish on the idea of Web3, of decentralized internet, where there is no single party or there is no group of tech giants who own the entire internet, but it's the users who actually govern and own it. Web3, in my opinion, is going to revolutionize creator's economy and lead a whole new wave of decentralization through community-led networks. I would love to know what you guys think about it.